We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday talking about what is natural marriage. That's kind of the question of the title we came up with. It was a tricky one to come up with, Mary Elena. I think uh, that's a good one to kind of raise the question because that's part of what this Tennessee Natural Marriage Defense <coughs> Act is, sponsored uh, in part by Representative uh, Mark Pote. He's going to be on on a later program to, to tell his side of it with us this morning. Is Abby Rubenfeld, an attorney who is against this bill, um, saying that uh, you know same-sex marriage is illegal according to the Supreme Court, and if it were to pass, you're going to be right there with others challenging oh, it legally. Absolutely. absolutely. I'm a firm believer in the rule of law and in the beauty of our Constitution. I think we have the best governmental system in the world, and it should be respected. And the way our system works has always worked since the country was formed is that the federal government is supreme. States are allowed to do certain things, but they can't, they can't have laws that violate the provisions of the United States Constitution. And the law in Tennessee that prohibited same-sex marriage did violate the United States Constitution. It's unconstitutional, and the state can't change that. The, con the U.S. Constitution well, would have to be amended. Well, you've already challenged it and exactly. won. And, exactly. and is this um, what was challenged originally when the Supreme Court, and you won, and you guys collected a million dollars in legal fees. Um, I mean, is this bill very similar to what it was that the Supreme Court already rejected, or do they make some subtle changes that no, they think may make it more likely to be upheld by the Supreme no, Court? No, this is more yeah. likely to be thrown out. Than because the other way, if it went to that, if it came right, to that. Right, because on its saying. face it's talking about nullifying uh, a ruling of the Supreme Court, and states cannot do that. That's just so, the, 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 the Civil War established that, okay, if nothing so, else. I mean, that's the thing, as I read this, and I will ask, you know, Representative Pody, um, I think you're right, he, it may be coming from his deep-held beliefs, exactly. which, which I'll respect, but this as is kind I. of a waste of time when you think of it has no chance, and even if it did go into effect, it would cost the state upward of $9 billion in federal aid. I, I, to me, and I, I invite the viewers, if you're, a, if you're someone who is a strong opponent of the idea of same-sex marriage, I'll respect that and I would love to hear from you, but are you okay with this challenge that has no chance and is going to cost the state all this money? I mean, and there's got to be other ways to fight the idea of same-sex marriage within your church or organization, whatever you want to do legally, right? I would say we would, this, um, if, the, if this passes, we would be able to immediately get an injunction against it being So it's just enforced. kind of like, you know, why are we doing I'd this when there's so much more, could. and again, I will ask Representative Pody when he comes on, I'm purposely doing this in two separate shows, I'm trying to get a handle on that, and it may just be his deep held beliefs to pull it out there and have call-in shows like this talking about it, but I don't see that there's any way he can win. I don't either. All right, let's go to uh, Charles. Hello, Charles. Good morning, Charles. Hello. Hey, what's on your mind? Yes, we have no place defining what is a good marriage and what is a bad marriage, because where would we draw the line? A hundred years ago, it may have been illegal for a uh, black person and a white person to get married, but now we know much better. Maybe during the 80s, it would have been bad publicity for an American to marry a Russian, but if a man loves a woman, and a woman loves that man, and the two men love each other, and the women love each other, go for it. I may be a proud Christian, but if I fall in love with a Muslim woman, or a Jewish woman, and her rabbi won't marry us, or his, uh, whatever Muslim priest is called, won't marry us, and why priest of marriage, okay, we're fine. We'll get a legal marriage because that's all we need. I happen to be a paralegal. I subscribe to law, especially subscribe to the nation. And so we have that legal document, which is legislated by a highest court land. That's how I need to feel. I'm married to this person. I mean, all these proud Southerners are saying it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Eve, but how <laughs> many Southerners are known for incest? What about <laughs> that? <laughs> All right. Well, Charles, I appreciate your call. Again, he's, he's like you along the lines of it's the rule of law. And I, I, I assume, as you sit here, had the Supreme Court not sided with you in that challenge, you'd have to live with what they did. Absolutely. It's just the way it is. It could have gone either way, but your argument Absolutely. prevailed. So it's the rule of law to some degree, and the only way to change that would be to go in and change the Constitution. You realize how hard that is to yes. do. Yes. <laughs> and it should, it it should, should be, be hard, exactly by the way. Right. Changing and amending the Constitution, there are some good reasons to do it, and but it should be very difficult. But you think do. about it, our country is 200 and whatever mm -hmm. years old, and there haven't been that many amendments. Yeah. I mean, it's a good document. Yeah, it's good because it can evolve through interpretation. Exactly. And you don't always have to change it, and the, the Supreme Court has done a good job of that. Um, let's go next to Peter. Good morning, Peter. Hey, Dick. 
Hey, Peter. I just like to add my two two cents on this sure. too, because uh, you know, I'm very conservative myself, and of course I'm a Trump supporter. But you know, I believe that basically we're founded on the concept of freedom in this country. <laughs> you know, I don't want to tell anybody how to live. That's really my, you know, why I became a conservative, and uh, I don't, you know, I think. People who should be allowed to marry if they want to. Uh, personally, I did it three times, happily one time, but uh, and she passed away. But I think my my late father-in-law used to always say, uh, "My rights end where your nose begins." <laughs> and I, That's I agree good. with that entirely. He was an editor of a newspaper, and he was a pretty smart guy. But yeah, I, I think it would be totally unconstitutional to restrict it. I've known people of all different spectrums and and different faiths and you know it, it's kind of, you know that that really is more like talking about primitive people when they you know they try to restrict <laughs> the type of marriage that we have i you know personally i would stay out of marriage and i'm finished with it myself <laughs> but uh, for everyone else yeah let them choose for themselves this is about freedom in this country this is not about restricting people yeah i got gotcha. all i gotta say thanks Nick. Hey, thank you very much. And Peter's right. He's a caller that comes into the show, and he is very conservative, but he makes a great point. There's an interesting dichotomy among the conservatives, who I think are among the majority that maybe object to same-sex marriage, in that Peter's one of these. Most conservatives would say they want as little government in their lives exactly. as possible, and I understand that. Okay? And here they're asking the government to kind of restrict someone's ability. I mean, it's, and again, I think it comes back to the conservatives, evangelicals perhaps. It's all religious-based. It's religious. I don't know where Peter comes from religiously, but he's like, look, let's keep the government out of all this stuff, you know? I mean... Well, and one thing to me that seems significant from the calls we're getting, I know it's not mm -hmm. a scientific analysis, yeah. but like all the conservatives that are calling in who I would disagree with about Trump, they still agree we're all on the same page about let people do what they want to do about marriage. It's a waste of time to do stuff like this and a waste of money. When you have had conversations with those who oppose it, and I think you probably picked up on it, it's religious reasons. That's what I when think. When you get into it, and they, well, what have they told you, and how do you kind of try to talk to them about it? When they say, look, my deeply held religious beliefs tell me there's a man and a woman for a reason, and we're, we're to be together for procreation. And when they say these types of things, and, and they believe them, um, how do you try to, you know, kind of have a civilized conversation with them to maybe kind of, you know, either you try to understand more where they're coming from or vice versa? Well, sometimes it's difficult. I try to explain that I completely respect their religious beliefs, as does the United States Constitution. They can have those beliefs all they want. It's just that, just as the First Amendment to the Constitution says you can freely exercise your religion, it also says the government cannot establish a religion. And if the reason for these marriage laws, the restrictions on same-sex marriage, if the reason is because it's not okay in the Bible, that's, that's imposing religion on people, so they, it can't be done. Yeah. It can't be done consistently with the United States Constitution. A side issue to this that I think is also significant, it's not part of this piece of legislation. I'm not sure how schooled you are on it all, but again, there's something with regard to adoptions and, and whether or not in the excess of, of same-sex couples or married couples adopting or should it only be... As, you, as it stands now <coughs> in the state of Tennessee, to your knowledge, you know, um, what the law is, where are things with regard to adoptions? Um, well, the law of Tennessee is very clear. Okay. Uh, any married couple or any individual can adopt. Uh, okay. An unmarried couple cannot adopt. So any married couple can adopt or any single person. And the process for an adoption involves a home study to make sure the person's going to be a good parent and be a safe home for the child. Sexual orientation is not a factor in Tennessee. All that is not a factor. We have case law saying you're not supposed to base custody decisions, and I think that would carry over to adoption. Uh, you're not supposed to base those on sexual orientation alone. What we need to do is worry about the kids and that we're giving them good parents. And when you read about cases in the paper about child molestation, all those horrible things mm -hmm. that can happen when we don't evaluate people well enough or when people have children and they shouldn't it's by and large it's going to be heterosexuals because they're more the population. Yeah, it's interesting to me that when there are legal challenges and there may be some legislation trying to address that do do opponents of that idea that you just described somehow think that if a same-sex couple adopts a child that they're going to 
force that child to be sick. I think, <laughs> they, like I think that. that is part of the argument, but just one way to sort of set up how confusing it is the argument that the other side makes, the people that say, there sh you know, we should be able to prohibit same-sex mm -hmm. marriage. When we went to the Sixth Circuit, which in the federal system, that's the appellate level before the Supreme mm -hmm. Court, when we went to the Sixth Circuit on our case, one of the judges on the panel had to ask our side if we could explain what the state was trying to argue because she could not follow it because it, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense their mm -hmm. argument it's it I think that their problem is that it is based on religion but the lawyers know they can't argue that that's unconstitutional and so the then rest, what are they left with and the procreation part I'm a lesbian I have two children I mean mm -hmm. that's you know that maybe back in the 1800s that could be an issue although mm -hmm. I, I still you know you're not required to have children if you get married mm -hmm. lots of people don't have children so that really no, is, right. isn't the standard but lots of gay people have children. Let's take a break on that note. We'll be back with our final segment and more of your phone calls as well as I've just, uh, Rick got me the uh, status, current status of this legislation. Fill you in on where it is. It's still early in the process. So we'll be back more with our guest, uh, Abby Rubenfeld, right after this. Stay with us.